The entire team at Emsolation want to acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We want to recognise that we are recording and telling our stories on the stolen land of our country's first storytellers. We wish to pay our respects to all Wurundjeri elders and ancestors and to extend that respect to any First Nations peoples who listen to Emsolation. We recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples' continued connection to the land and waters of this country and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. Always was, always will be. M. Rossiano. What endurance? What scrotal endurance? M. Michael Lucas. When athleticism meets outrageous camp, that's where you live. It's your sweet spot. This is M. Salation. It was a genre I'd been ignoring in my search for the perfect plug for the hole in my soul. Ah! <laughs> exactly what you've ordered up for yourself. You're in M. Salation. Well, hello there and welcome to Emsolation. <laughs> My name is Em Rossiano. I'm a writer, a singer, a stand-up comedian, a maximalist power queen, a neurodivergent magic brain. I'm autistic and I have ADHD combo type, in case you were wondering. And I'm a podcaster and together with my best friend since I was 11, screenwriter, actor, Augie, Logie Award winner, Mr. Michael Lucas, I bring you this podcast every week. I'm laughing <laughs> because this is the fourth time I've done this intro and this is it. I'm not going back because there's a thing that I can't tell you until next week and I keep, like, I'm terrible with secrets. I just want to be, get everything out on the table so we can all get on with things and I'm not allowed to tell you. And so stop talking now, Em. Stop it. Just quickly break the cycle. What are you going to... Oh, God. Oh, that's coming. How are you? I am good. It was Scotty's 50th birthday over the weekend. We had a lovely lunch at my house. And then I ended the day riding atop the giant inflatable wang at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, which seems right. You know, sometimes I am Liza Minnelli cosplaying as Marge Simpson. This is something I've said about myself and I'm sticking to it. Hey, last week we talked about our night out with the cast of Glee, if you'll recall, and we wondered if they remembered. We wondered if any of you could perhaps get in contact with them and find out if they remembered their night out with Michael Lucas and I in Sydney. Turns out (laughs) they do. What do I? Thank you, Chella. Here is a podcast that two of the former Glee cast have. The podcast belongs to, let me, yes, it's called And That's What You Really Missed and it stars Kevin McHale who played Artie and Jenna Ushkovitz that played Tina and on an episode entitled, God damn it, uh, Up and Down Under, Season 1, Ep 3, Ackerfellas. Well, have a listen. It was our first trip out of the country for the show, and the reception was very, very warm. I mean, wild. Pretty unbelievable. There, so in both cities, Sydney and Melbourne, we went to these events. Fun fact, <laughs> we were out the night before till God knows when, the morning. We all were partying like crazy, and the next morning... We get to the bridge climb or we're in the I'm in the hotel room getting ready and we get a call from the PR from Fox. They're like, hey, you guys, just, you know, like excited for the bridge climb. Just want to let you know you get there, you sign your release forms and then you take a breathalyzer test and you go up. And I'm like, (laughs) breathalyzer test. I text Kevin. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, yeah, we were. I think I'm still drunk. Yeah, we were all definitely still drunk. Wasted. I mean, They don't mention us by name, but, I mean, you can read between the lines. You can practically hear them whispering, Em and Michael. I mean, it was us. We caused their hangovers when they were about to climb the Sydney Harbour Bridge. That was us. So that was pretty exciting. Thank you to everybody who alerted us to that fact. God, I love our community. Nothing gets by you. That's why I always say if I go missing, don't call the police. Call the emsolators. This is who I want on the case. Because not only will you find me, you'll pick a flattering picture. Don't trust Scott. One of you needs to make sure Scott is not allowed to give a picture of me if I go missing. Okay? 
You are all in charge of that. I just know you'll pick the right one with the right vibes. All right. Okay. Hey, it's a fun old episode. We talk about, well, my Saturday night and what it entailed in depth. You wait. You wait till you hear some of the acts I saw. We talk about the passing of Barry Humphreys. And, you know, if you've been online in the last few days, there's been some argy-bargy over that. It's a complex situation in the internet. Again, he's not allowing for any nuance. We talk about the new show that I've started watching. Well, no, actually, that's a lie. I binged it. I finished it. I did eight episodes in two days. (laughs) It's really, really good. And it came, look, I wasn't expecting it. It was recommended by my mum and, God, it really scratched my itch. I need to tell you this. And Michael makes, quite frankly, a shocking, shocking admission. Which challenged me. I then went away and viewed the thing that he said that he enjoyed. And you'll hear my conclusions in the outro. Oh my goodness, so much mystery. That's enough from me now. I'm okay. I've got lots going on. Um, can't even remember what number intro this is. There's something I've done so many. Did I say what? I can't remember if I. There's something I'm not supposed to tell you. Did I say that in this rendition of the intro? Oh, God, I'm, st- I'm stopping. I love you all. I see you all. There's big things coming for us. <laughs> Shut up, Em. I'm going. Stay tuned. Don't, you know, just don't forget to, like, be across all the Instagram, all the newsletters, all the Facebook group. There's, 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 things, there's things afoot. All right, I'm going. I love you all. Enjoy this episode. I know you will. Of course you will. It's us. Play the music. Luciano and Michael Lucas. This is Emsolation. Michael Lucas, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Saturday for me, let's get straight into it, was a strange old day. Scott mm. Barrow turned 50. Wow. It's really weird. I have a 50 year old boyfriend. <laughs> Some might say that he's progressed beyond boyfriend. <laughs> Some might say that happened like almost 20, 20 years ago. 22 years ago. Jesus. No, but it's still strange because in my mind I'm 25. Yeah. And I'm literally dating someone double my age. Like it's. I mean, I'm not. Does obviously. it help to process when you look and see that you've got a daughter <laughs> that is like a fully grown <laughs> adult? He's still 50. Remember how old 50 was when we were younger? Do you remember? Yes. My Although, parents are still 50 in my mind, even though they're both 70. Oh, yeah, 50 was pretty old. 50 was pretty old. But 50, I, I mean, I don't want to <laughs> be weird about it. 50 genuinely was older then than it is now in lots of ways. I really think that. I believe so. <laughs> After seeing Selma Hayek in a yellow bikini at 56, not that it matters. Not that it matters. Oh, my God, but I do. Good for her. Wow. <laughs> I know. We're living in the era. I mean, and Paul Rudd somewhere in his 50s, uh, isn't he? Yes. Uh, Nick is Kidman. I mean. We're fine. <laughs> it's not that we're clutching and both of us are, are staring down the barrel of 45 soon enough. 40, 50 is the new 30. <laughs> totally fine. So Scott didn't want to do much for it. I basically forced a family lunch on him. Oh, okay. Yes, which was nice. We had someone come in and cook for his mm. parents and my parents mm. and his brother and his nephews. Mm. And that was great. But then I kind of had to reset because I did the K-hole on Saturday night, which is Ruben K's variety night. Yes. And it's basically, it's a queer, freak, circus, amazing, spectacular. Yeah. And when I say circus acts, I'm not joking. No. Because what I witnessed, my goodness. So you can imagine my call, I was on stage to be on stage at 11.45 p.m. Wow. (laughs) Where am I normally at that time? Oh, absolutely failing to sleep in bed <laughs> for some time. <laughs> so I, we, I, was, I started doing my makeup at like 9 p.m. and it felt wild. It just it took me back to my time. You can, know, I, can we just get a time check on what time had you had risen that day? 5 a.m. 
I'd, I'd gotten up at five because Elio is currently obsessed with playing Super Mario and it's, he wakes up the first thing he says, can we play DS? So we got up and we played that. I was making porridge at six and then I was starting the cleaning process because, you know, you got to clean the house to look like a display home and lie and say this is the way we live at all times. Yeah. And I'd done all that. And so, yeah, 9 p.m. as I sat down to do my 8 p.m.? 8 p.m. as I sat down to do my makeup. Some would say peaking early because I still didn't have to be on stage for quite a few yeah, hours. Yeah, that makeup could crack. But I did it and mm. then Marcella and I, we, we came in and, mm. we, and we went and we had a drink and it was at about 10.30 I was due side of stage to do a tech. Oh, so I left Marcella with her friend and I went and at 10.30 I got there. They weren't ready for me. 11 o'clock we teched the giant penis. <laughs> Although we didn't get time to inflate him. So they just wanted to see the size of him. But uh, due to time constraints. He, but he inflates very fast. He does, but hasn't been inflated since you and I were bouncing on him a few oh. months ago. So I didn't know if there was a hole in it or something was wrong. Yeah. But that's okay. So I'm backstage and it was kind of cool. Ruben has all different types of circus acts and comedians and performers and men who spin from ribbons and yes. G-strings and all yes. the fire breathers. And so. Your I, people. Yeah, I can't. Well, yes, I kind of felt oddly not awkward. It was truly great. There was literally people walking around nude but for like a, a, a tiny tassel on a nipple. Yeah. There, I saw more penises than I ever thought imaginable. But it was all totally. <laughs> on your husband's 50th, no less. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> it was totally strange but also oddly comforting. Just being amongst people who, I don't know, everybody was, it, well, I sat there feeling really kind of, not nostalgic, but just welcomed. I don't know. Yes. I, well, I, when <laughs> athleticism meets outrageous camp, that's where you live. It's your sweet spot. So true. So um, I did the sound check. We went backstage. They filed, And it was sold out. Forum Theatre to the rafters. Oversold. Mm. And Ruben, the first thing, I, he, Ruben says to me, you've got to watch the opening act. I'm like, I'm going to watch the whole thing. I literally sat in the crowd mm. in costume with the audience. Mm. And the first thing, a man walks out and he's dressed as the devil except mm. just his hair, the rest is a grey suit. And he gives a speech and a sermon about how we're all going to hell in this room. Of course, mm. great. And then he just starts taking his clothes off and he's suddenly there, fully naked, co co covered in tattoos, lots of piercing around his penis. Mm -hmm. And I sat and amused, amused, thinking this is the second penis my child and I have seen on stage in a week. <laughs> Yeah. Because another show that we saw involved full frontal yes, nudity also. There. And, yes, you were there too. Mm. Yes, you shared in the moment of the penis <laughs> with my child and I. And so I was just amusing to myself. And then all of a sudden the man ties a rope around his penis mm. and walks backwards and uh, upon a chariot made of skulls and fire, Reuben K appears. That would really hurt, I think. I agree, but I'm I was... Not, I'm not going to test the theory, but I'm just going to imagine it would hurt. Nary a wince. He, wow. looked, he was smiling the entire time. It wow. was fantastic. Wow. What endurance, what scrotal endurance. Yeah. I felt like, um, I just felt like clapping him and saying, yeah. sir, are there exercises we do for this? Yes. Are there potential hazards we should be aware of <laughs> when one puts this much weight? I love it. So Ruben appears, gives this incredible opening kind of monologue, and then we're on. And there's, there's all sorts of acts happening. My favourite act, though, I got on, I sung, we had the penis, him and I got on together. But the highlight for me, no doubt, there was two. There was a woman who was fire-breathing nude. Mm. She was incredible. Mm. But the best act was the closing act, mm -hmm. which will stay with me for quite some time. Mm. So, um, you know, the popcorn song, do, 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 we'll put it on, oh, yeah, that yeah. comes on. Yeah. And th first of all, we know we know this act means business because four naked stagehands, all of Ruben's um, support crew, the, yeah. the side of stage, they're, they're nude also. Oh, yeah? completely. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw another dick that night. Oh, my God, yes. Wow, so yeah. many dicks. They start laying a tarp on stage and right. when a tarp comes out, you know that something's going down. It's yeah. one thirty in the morning and there's a tarp. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. And so we've already seen three or four dicks by this stage. What could come now? <laughs> and then all of a sudden popcorn music starts. A lady appears on stage. She's got full clown makeup. She's totally nude. Yeah, of course. Except for a stack hat with a popcorn machine attached to it. Mm. I'm like, what's going on here? What's going on here? They plug the popcorn machine in. She grabs a bag full of kernels, pours them in, mm. and then six gold hula hoops are thrown to her. She catches each of them perfectly. Wow. She begins hula hooping whilst nude, whilst making popcorn on her head. <laughs> then someone brings out a tub of Nutalex, which I appreciated because uh, I am lactose intolerant, yep. and she covers her entire body 
while hula hooping, while making popcorn on her head with butter. Wow. Right? Wow. Then the popcorn starts popping yep. and the popcorn sticks to her body because it's covered in butter, still hula hooping, still hula hooping, throwing them out to the crowd, catching them, the whole thing. And then just as we think we're getting to the end, everyone's clapping, she's covered in popcorn, she drops the hula hoops, opens her legs like quite a stride, like a half side split and produces, I would say, a 20 centimetre salt shaker from her vagine. Wow. Good for her. What a finale. Full of salt, so it had some weight to it. Yeah. She kept it there the entire act, six minutes. Yeah. And salted the popcorn. Wow. Atop her naked body. Incredible. I mean, where's my applause button? (laughs) That is art. That is art. You should have seen I. I have never, I was just captivated, mainly just thinking (laughs) I just really wished I could rewind and watch her vagina. Mm. Like I didn't think about, she was the whole time, my God. You didn't think to fix on her vagina to study the muscle sensation. No, I was too fixated on the popcorn catching on her nipples. The true victory of what she was doing you didn't see. I just think Scott should consider himself lucky he didn't get like a 5am text saying, Scott, I run off with (laughs) penis pulley man and vagina salt woman. They're my people. They are. They are my people. I think this day is like if you if you put it in a time capsule, if you if if there's some point in your life where they go, you have to say what was the most M. Rossiano day of your entire existence, you'll say, it began with Super Mario Brothers <laughs> and my son, and it ended with There was a family lunch. Yeah, family lunch, of course. Yep. Had to clean the whole house. Yeah. <laughs> Husband turned 50. <laughs> And then saw yep. a lot of penises with my daughter and then finally, mm. yeah. It was yeah. 24 hours straight. We're, we're not even including a road astride a giant inflatable or deflating penis. Uh, it, yeah, he inflated and then begun deflating. Yeah, no, I as well rode atop a giant enormous mm. wang. Mm. It, was an, it was a night of nights. I have to say there was a man who was throwing himself off like straps with tiny little sequin shorts on and I did think about that as I made Elio's porridge the next morning because Scott, of course, was going for a ride on Sunday morning. Couldn't have had the morning off. Just, no. No. No, okay. So Scott was going out for a ride at 6 a.m. Sunday Jesus. morning. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I okay. mean, what a guy. Nah, nah, happy birthday, Scott. All well <laughs> so you've come in here saying, I've got a pop culture. I've got, I want to drop it It's a you. confession. What? Oh, my God. Do I need to, like, what do I need to do? do I need I'm to, not proud of it. <gasps> do I need to line up a dun-dun-dun? Do you feel? Uh, maybe. It's my, it's, it's just an honest reaction. Okay. Go. Oh my God. Okay, wait. I feel like, okay, go. What? Okay. It, it involves one of your greatest villains. What? I watched the last ever James oh, Corden couple wanna... karaoke and I enjoyed it so much I cried. I'm sorry. I didn't expect it was going to happen. I wasn't watching for him. I was watching for Adele. Big mistake. <laughs> Huge. Have you watched it? I refuse because I know oh. I'm going to love it. I know I'm going to love yeah, it. you'll love it. No, I refuse. I've had so many people go, we know how you feel about him. Yeah. But this is... It's not about him. It's about her. Yeah, but does it exonerate him? Does it leave him on a... Like, everyone's going to be like, oh, we've judged him too harshly. Not me, actually. I still managed to hold on to the annoyance even as I was weeping over just the emotion of it all. I don't know. But there's lots about... I can't explain. It is her. It's her that so makes explain, it great. explain, explain. Well, everyone knows what carpool karaoke is and mm. and, uh, and so he's finishing his show. You'll be happy to know. He's going <laughs> back to London mm-hmm. and uh, the James Corden Late Late Show or whatever it is, it will be no more. Uh, so there's a lot of speculation over who would be the last guest and they did do P. Diddy, I think, but then, but then she apparently surprised him, although I don't believe it. So <laughs> she goes into his house. He just so happened to be sleeping with clothes on. You wouldn't read about it. <laughs> she wakes him up. And then they do their final one where they reflect on their um, time together in LA. She's driving him to work. That's the premise. Driving him for his last day. And she sings a number of her songs. And she sings, they sing together, Don't Rain On My Parade, which obviously mm. I know, see, look, I can feel it in you. I felt the tremor. of. Oh, but she hates musical theatre. She hates musical theatre. She talks about that, but she still belts out that song. Because she'll never get a Tony because she hates musical theatre. Right. She's an ego. She talks about that too. Oh, no. I know. She talks about all of it. I know. But what, I mean... They also talk about, I did not know how close they were, allegedly, and that's pretty nauseating. Apparently their families are incredibly close, but also they moved to LA at the same time eight years ago. And so she gets really emotional about it, talking about how much their lives have changed and talking about, you know, and it just, I think it's because... (laughs) Oh, no! Obviously her music and everything like that has just been a part of the past decade and you just can't, like, it's everyone, everyone, yeah. 
And and to a certain extent, even carpool karaoke has. But it was just, it was just had this beautiful sense of end of an era. Last ever time that I'll do this, and um, it's blown my mind that you've done this for me. You're one of my best friends and, in the whole world. And you are mine. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. I so love much. you, and you. We have had the best times here. And, oh my uh, god, we really have. She was so open and emotional. It made you. Ref- I don't know. Just oh, <laughs> I felt no! like I felt like it's kind of like saying goodbye to my thirties. <laughs> I know. I I wouldn't say there were full juicy tears, but I definitely Delicate. my eyes glistened. Oh, yeah. So I are, watched the full twenty something minutes of it. God damn it! Fine, watch it. I'll watch. He'll it. still annoy you. Good. There was one bit where she it says that one of the songs that she's written was actually written about him and then sings it, and it's ruined that song for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll watch it before the outro and I'll report back to everybody. So before I record this part that comes after us, I'll watch it and I'll let everyone know what I think. Oh, you'll have all the reactions. I think you'll be sitting there going, ah, I hate him! And then you'll be like, it's just so emotional. <laughs> You have it all. My dislike of him is not irrational. No, there is no, many, no. and a lot of people still don't understand it. Like, oh, what's the harm? But the problem is, so many people say, "What's the harm?" About so many men like him that it ends up quite harmful. Mm. He's uh, he's entitled. He's rude. He says some really awful things about the trans community. There's been multiple examples of him just being an asshole mm. to people that he feels are beneath him. Mm. I just. He blamed the entire FX team for cats. Mm. He just doesn't seem to me like somebody who appreciates the work others do around him in any way. Mm. So, and this has been a built up frustration I've had for well over a decade. In my breakfast radio days, when couple karaoke was like going off, mm. I was told everybody loves him. Do not tell anyone your true feelings. So I hung on. To my true feelings. <laughs> well, it's over now. Good. God damn it, though. If this makes me, if this makes me thaw towards him in any way, it won't make you thaw towards him. It'll just make you love Adele. Fine. <laughs> well, we didn't know how to talk about it, but we have to talk about it because Dame Edna Everidge played such a pivotal role in both of our entertainment upbringings and culture. Mm. It's such a cultural. Mm touchstone for us and obviously Barry Humphreys passed away and look the three you know it always comes in threes father Bob Doug Mulray and Barry Humphreys so three dudes very different figures there but dudes who loomed large in terms of culture for Australia mm. they they did mm. Barry Humphreys passed away 89 and arguably one of the greatest comedians this country has ever produced mm. no or one, any country any country mm. no one can argue Mainstay being Dame Edna Everidge. Uh, did you, when you were a kid, did you think, I thought Dame Edna was a woman? Totally. Yeah, for, uh, for quite a long time. Uh, absolutely, because Dame Edna reminded me so much of my grandmother mm. because Denise used to wear her hair in a similar fashion. Oh, and that was what was so incredible about it. it so much about the, her body language and everything like that. Like my grandmother, who was another Melbourne woman of, of uh, older than Dame Edna Everidge, but the exact kind of person Dame Edna was spoofing. So, yeah. When she spoke to you, she liked to sort of clutch your yes. forearm. And that is, you see Dame Edna do that with guests. It always yeah. just completely, and it was wild to me that someone that was essentially in lots of ways spoofing my grandmother was like the toast of Broadway and all <laughs> that. It's wild. And the, just the way she used to do the lips too, you know, the... Yeah. Forward. My grandmother did that. Yeah. But also the first kind of the camp comedy that I was always drawn to. Mm. And a lot of my stage persona would go down to, you know, Bette Midler, Dame Edna, Freddie Mercury, Liza Minnelli, like of that ilk, Lucille Ball. And so, yes, of course, we all have this kind of, of if you're of our age, especially this spot in our heart, but it's a complex situation we find ourselves in yet again with the passing of somebody who was beloved by many mm. but also became quite a controversial figure, you know, around, was it 2014 those statements were made? Mm. And I think doubled down again in 2018. But Barry Humphreys basically said that the trans community wasn't real and that they were attention-seeking and that gender-affirming surgery was self-mutilation and Mm-mm. that it was a fad Mm. And it was really devastating mm. because he was a drag queen. I know. The bizarre thing was I watched the tribute to him on The View and they were using it to say, you know, when we 
just remember America, here's this man that for 60 years entertained in drag, never hurt anyone. And so his life was being used as this like example of, mm. of don't, of, of stop the fear and stop all that prejudice and everything. But yeah, in that particular area, he, yeah, absolutely. He said some horrible things of a piece with Jermaine Greer, who was a similar age to him, who he went over to London at the same time with, and, you know, she's expressed similar, similar statements and, and, um, and has also drawn flack. And now with both of them, we, you sort of have to hold both parts of their legacy, mm. you know. Which being able to hold both part, both parts of their legacy is a, a privilege, you know, for mm. us because we're not in the trans community. Mm. And I think what people need to, we're, we find ourselves in this tough discussion of separating the art from the artist, mm. which is something we're going to be forced to do more and more and more. And we are, even with things coming out about beef, you know, this TV show that's oh, taken no, the world by yeah, storm. Yeah. yeah, two of the lead actors are now embroiled in pretty gross accusations and not even accusations. They were both on a podcast, made some really awful jokes. One laughed, one made them. And there seemed to be a theme amongst these jokes. Mm -hmm. And now they're kind of being held to task over them. And I think this is going to be something we're all going to have to think about more and more is sometimes the people who make stuff that we love, they don't, they aren't great people all the time. Mm -hmm. And then also that difficult part was Melbourne International Comedy Festival has just wrapped up. The, the, the big award used to be called the Barry after mm -hmm. Barry Humphreys. And that's like most outstanding show. And they, they changed that after he made these comments and that movement was kind of spearheaded by Hannah Gatsby and a few other comedians mm. saying, look, we have to create a safe space for all artists and how can we do that? But there are trans comedians. In fact, this year Jordan Gray was nominated for the award who's a trans woman. Mm. And imagine having to accept an award named after somebody who tried to... Yeah, it said trans women were mutilated men. <laughs> yeah. So you need to, I guess everybody needs to understand no one's... No one's saying everything that Barry Humphreys ever did was awful and, and he was cancelled. He was not cancelled. I know. That, that, that's really driven me insane, mm. like people saying he was cancelled. that I mean, it's absurd. There were major tributes to him in every paper of the world. There were People were not shy about coming forward and proclaiming their adoration of all of his work on and a I global saw that. scale. Yeah, people that I know were allies to the trans community were posting. Mm. And I chose not to mm. because I have friends who are trans performers and I know what those comments did mm, to them. Mm. And I felt like putting a picture up of the person who said them multiple times was not me being kind of the best ally I can be and the best friend I can be. And it doesn't mean I don't, I laughed and loved Dame Edna. Mm, mm. But I think in this point, you just have to let every individual do it the way they want to do it. Totally. Sammy J wrote a really good, he was on the board when they mm. changed the name mm. and I thought his article was really good. Paying tribute to everything that he's drawn from Barry Humphreys and Dame Edna's legacy and everything like that while also saying, but we made the decision for exactly the reason you said. Mm. You can't, you know, trans performers might be nominated and you can't ask them to accept an award. But yeah, I, I also just want to eradicate cancelled from, from the vocabulary. It's so unhelpful. No it's just one's cancelled. It's bizarre in, in this point in time to say that he was cancelled when you're seeing, like, I can't turn on the television without seeing some of his routines. I've seen that brilliant bit he did going into Charles and Camilla's oh. booth. At, I've, it's brilliant, but I've seen it 800 times. Mm, it's true. <laughs> He's probably going to get a state funeral. I mean. Uh, definitely. I mean, it's just, I think, again, that, and it's going to shock everyone, and we said it last week, the, the internet is deciding you have to either be pro-Barry or mm. you're either with us or against us. Mm. That's the whole thing. Whereas I think we all just, and I know that our audience especially understands this, that you can say, yeah, I loved Dame Edna and I thought he was a comedic genius, mm. but he also said some really shitty things that I don't agree with. And I think it's okay to have both. And yeah, everybody totally. seems to think you've got to pick either or. And, I know. I, and also in real life when real people die, when members of your family, everyone knows what it's like to have some sort of uncle or something die. Yes. And the feelings are complex. They might have been brilliant in some ways and shitty in some ways. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's life basically. But I think we have to get better at talking about these things. Mm, well, I mean, I, yeah, I definitely think that in the social media environment, it gets hard because everything boils down to these tiny mm. little statements. But yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> we're not living in an era of nuance. No! Uh... <laughs> em Rossiano and Michael Lucas. This is, 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 is Emsolation.
Oh, my God, I found a new TV show. It's so good. <laughs> exactly what you've ordered up for yourself. But, and, and it was a genre I'd been ignoring in my search for the perfect plug for the hole in my soul. <laughs> like I just, I was searching around and, and it was recommended by my mother of all people. And she said, oh, there's a new show called The Diplomat. And then my mum says in classic Jennings style, you're smart enough to understand it. I think you'll get it. <laughs> what a compliment. I said, what? She's now you're bright enough. You'll be right. I'm like, oh. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so I put it on that night and because she sold me with it's like the, it's like the West Wing yes. but a bit soapier, yeah. right? And I mean straight away because yeah. obviously I spent a lot of my Saturday nights as a young person watching the West Wing with my mum and dad. That yeah. was all I did. And <laughs> that course, was the healthiest relationship to family you have. Pretty much. And so The Diplomat is, oh, I don't even know where to begin. It stars uh, Kerry Russell, a.k.a. Yes. Felicity. Or The Americans. Never depending watched on it. which Really? Nah. Okay. You know what? The title put me off. The Americans. Really? Yeah. Okay. Is it good? I watch but they're it? Russian. I mean, that's the irony uh, of it. Oh. oh. <laughs> they're pretending well, to be Well, that's American. misleading. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yes, and Felicity, obviously. Iconic. Felicity. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So she is the, she's the star of it and I don't even know how to begin. Wait, let's put a little bit in. Ambassador Catherine Weiler, Prime Minister Nicole Trowbridge. Welcome. Sir, it's an honour to meet you. Ah, honour to be met. <laughs> Someone is luring a strike force into the Persian Gulf. The president is sending you to stop a war before it starts. Not butter a crumpet. Welcome to London, Ambassador Wilder. Tell me how. I'm the ambassador's wife. My husband was an ambassador for a long time. This will be an adjustment. You need to lean into the Cinderella thing. I'm not doing this the way you would. That's fine. Just don't do it wrong. I text you immediately. Mm. I said, you have to watch this. Oh, my God. It's West Wing. It's Good Wife. It's not as well written, but well written enough. Mm -mm. And then you've watched it and you've also felt that it's a bit Bridgerton. Well, the thing was, you told me about it and we put it on late. And in the opening moments, there's some big explosion on a ship and then you find out she's meant to be an ambassador and then she gets redeployed. And actually, we, we were a bit tired and decided it wasn't the time. And we stopped it there and we felt like it's sort of like a, you know, B plus maybe political thriller, whatever. The bit that we didn't get to is she gets she gets reassigned to be... The British ambassador for the United States of America. The, the American ambassador in Britain. Yeah. And then when she goes there, you suddenly realise yeah. that a huge part of the show is her going to be swanning around in big mansions, going to photo shoots and that whole glamorous life. Yeah. About And I'm someone that's just about to be going to the UK. Yeah. And so, yeah, so for me it felt like Bridgerton. It is. And the, because, the combination of oh. the two, I never would have thought you could put West yes. Wing and Bridgerton together. They've done it and they're going to make millions of dollars and they deserve it. Excuse me, we're living in an age where Alonso, Fernando Alonso is dating Taylor Swift. So. What? Yes. Who's Fernando Alonso? Come on. Hang on. No. No, what? I don't know. You do know. Do I? Yes, I've spoken about him many times. Why would I have spoken? Uh, 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 is he car racing? Yes. Oh. He's the guy that looks like Scott. Oh, my God. Is he dating Taylor Swift? There are wild rumours afoot that Fernando Alonso, F1 driver, is dating Taylor Swift. The collision wow. of my worlds. That's another fan fiction situation <laughs> for you. <gasps> I should write that. Okay, next week I'm writing a Taylor Swift, Fernando Alonso fan fiction date. <laughs> I'm going to write their first date. Oh, I want to go immediately now and write it. Oh, my God. Are you looking it up? Are you I looking? am. He's literally, wait, hang on a minute. Hang on a he's minute. He's 41. Yeah. He's got it. He's, he's, he's fact-checking me. <gasps> oh. Wow, I love the No, I'm I, I just love how he's teased it. He's teased it. Mm -hmm. He did a TikTok to her song Karma. Correct. And then he said Race Week Era. And as we all know, she's on the Eras Tour. Correct. We thought it was the Eras Tour for <laughs> a solid minute and a half. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe it? Wow, he keeps dropping yeah. references to her songs. Yeah. But she's on tour. Mm-hmm. So is he. But are they even in the same place? Well, they just well, he just had two weeks off and so did she. So I don't care, don't ruin it. Let's get back. Okay. So the diplomat. What you don't even realize how bang on you are about Bridgerton because have you met the UK foreign minister yet? No. Woo! Oh, is he hot? Is he hot? She gotta be tempted. You wait. You oh wait. my god. I'm just up you to wait. and that that marriage, not what you think. Oh, no, the marriage being not what you think is apparent in the first episode. But it dips in oh. and out, in and out, in and out. 
Okay. And then you wait till you meet the British Foreign Minister. Oh, I can't wait. Who? My God. Okay. You don't, and, and, and his sister and their mansion. Oh. Oh, my God. And the UK Prime Minister. And, I met the and UK the little, Prime Minister. The little, um, the little kind of power-playing elderly woman in the background who's been sacked from the Tories but actually pulls all the strings. Yeah. <gasps> anyway. I just knew it was the perfect show when really early on she arrives and she's meeting all the staff like it's fucking Downton Abbey. It was. And, <laughs> and then. There is a Vogue photo shoot in the first episode. Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah. That was it. <laughs> but then I love that they did at first. They made sure to have her reject the Vogue photo shoot, totally. and then do a lot of like all these jokes about Cinderella and everything like that, just to show, yeah, we're feminists, we're smart. We're the episode blah, blah, blah. was called the Cinderella yeah. effect. But then they still make sure to give you that 100%. photo shoot. Yeah, that is <laughs> just the whole show is you know having your cake and eating it too. Mate. And, <gasps> what I can't cake? recommend it enough. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done it all. Oh, I did it in two days. Fucking hell! I just I how many episodes? Eight, ten. Eight. Okay. And also, like, they're not bringing out the next one for a year. They haven't even commissioned it. Netflix hasn't even, like, given it the, the green light. So I am, like, telling everyone to watch it. So we get a I green light. I hate to tell you, if they, if they it won't be in one year if they haven't given it the green light yet. It'll take longer than that. You no. have a long way. I'm really sorry. Yeah. No! Uh, Especially for something like that. That's shot all over the world. Don't they go to... Paris. Oh, okay. They end in Paris. They do. And it's spectacular. Oh, it's everything you want. At a ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It has been created. It's like AI went in and found. It's great. Is so, there is there a sassy gay though? There's not. There's a, a clear. Uh, the is husband, this? even though he's oh, not gay, okay, has gay energy. Yeah, he's not gay. Definitely not. Mm. But he definitely brings the camp. Okay. Yes. Mm, there's a few camp. You'll see. The, the woman who heads up the CIA in London, she's incredible. Just wait. It's, okay. I know I haven't really told anybody. We haven't really given anything away except that if you love the West Wing and Bridgerton and just like, I don't know, so much sexual tension, it, it's crazy. And the ass on the British foreign minister is <laughs> insane. Insane. Like, I just, I hope, I'm going to go hopefully find some kind of YouTube compilation that some industrious gay has made to that man's ass. I don't know who the actor is. Wow. My God. Diplomat. That is not a sentence I thought I'd hear at this time <laughs> of the morning. The ass on the British foreign minister. Insane. All I right. think I just want to Google who the actual British foreign minister is. Okay, do is. it. British, here we go. British foreign minister. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, I think he's the Secretary of State. Oh, well, quite different. No, the Secretary the of State. The Foreign Secretary. Oh, yeah. Foreign Secretary, yeah. Show me. Oh, the, no. no, no that's the, the one. real one. That's okay. what I'm saying. <laughs> no. Go look at the one in the show. Oh, no, that's why I just wanted to see the real one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait a minute, but I will look okay, at the one go. in the show. Diplomat. Um, I think he's the Foreign Secretary. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh, David, is he that one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Anyway, it's great. 10 out of 10, would recommend. All right, that's it. Uh, next week, Michael, we're making a huge announcement on the podcast. You're How across exciting. You're across it. I am. And on a scale of 1 to 10, you could probably let people know how much this announcement has been shredding my nervous system. Uh, on a scale of 1 to she's calling saying she's got an ocular migraine and I have to Google it. I That's... did have an ocular migraine. It's true. This is a huge, biggest, massive thing and I'm terrified and I'm getting ocular migraines. <laughs> Can I just say, I love it when you get an ocular migraine. It's like, is it the overwhelming career uncertainty and stress or is it just that I was up at 2 o'clock in the morning bouncing on a huge inflatable penis? We'll never know. Probably both. I was going to say, little from column A, yeah. little from column B. <laughs> Nuance. <laughs> Hold both things in your hand. This is what we're saying. So uh, we'll be chatting soon. There's a big family meeting happening next week also. We're going to all get together live via Crowdcast. You'll all be getting information on that. But keep next Wednesday night free. Until then, speculate all that you want. You'll never get it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. This is Emsolation. Well, I've gone away and watched James Corden's final couple karaoke with Adele and it was lovely and their friendship is lovely. And as we keep preaching... I'm sure he's not a bad person. He's just made some really shitty choices. But my goodness, it was really great. She's, it made me love her more. She's so amazing. <laughs>
<laughs> and those Streisand nails. So, yeah, I watched it. I loved it. It's had 8 million views already. It's only been online 24 hours. Number one trending video on YouTube. So I think, my goodness. Oh, yes, Michael was right. Fine. Well, thank you for being here. We'll be chatting again next week. And as just mentioned, the team and I have a huge announcement. We'll be holding a family meeting next Wednesday night. But it's exciting times ahead. You'll understand why I have been so... Not anxious, but no anxious. Behind the scenes for the last, I would say, eight weeks, it's been really ramping up and I can't wait to be able to speak openly about it and keeping this secret has been killer because I'm not good at keeping secrets, as you all know. I'm really excited about what the next kind of step is and I'm really hoping you all come along. I know, I know you will. I know you will. So um, until next week, have a wonderful weekend and um, all will be revealed. Bye. M Salation with M Rossiano is a Spotify exclusive podcast recorded at Down the Hill Studios, hosted by M Rossiano with Michael Lucas and sometimes her eldest daughter, Marcella. Executive produced by Benjamin Wosley, produced by M Rossiano, edited by Ezekiel Fenn, with videos by James Henderson, socials by Marcella Rossiano Barrow, with assistance from Jem Evans, plus cameos from M's dad. Vinci. Get the full Emsolation experience by following us on Instagram at Emsolation Podcast. You can also sign up for our weekly newsletter. Join other Emsolators at the Emsolation Group on Facebook. The answer is Harry Styles. If you really want to help us out, you could become a patron of Emsolation. Share this podcast with a friend. Give us a five-star rating and make sure you're following us on the Spotify app by actually hitting the follow button. As always, thanks for listening. And we're excited to chat with you again soon. Oh, yeah, I saw another dick that night. Oh, my God, yes. Wow, so many dicks.